I really want to know, is the show even worth all the hype? Hey friends, it's Lauren. Welcome to the Happy Haunts Library where Halloween is a lifestyle. And today we're gonna to be talking about a horror Netflix series, The Fall of the House of Usher. I have been waiting so very patiently to give this series the time that it deserves, or at least I think it deserves, to really sit with it, to watch it, to experience it without feeling super rushed. I know it came out in October of 2023, which of the time that I'm filming this, it's about three months ago. So although this is not the most like timely review and reaction video for this series, I think it does help me a little bit to come in with a little bit more of a balanced perspective when I'm reviewing this show because it's kind of after all the hype, that big hype wave that really came with the release of this series. To secure their fortune and future, two ruthless siblings build a family dynasty that begins to crumble when their heirs mysteriously die one by one. I am so ready to give this series a shot. I'm about to turn it on right now, but first I did wanna talk a little bit about my hopes and concerns when it comes to watching this. I admit it, I am really, really bad at finishing series. Is anybody else like that? Like I wish, I had a little bit more momentum and you know, I just really have to be like super committed. I just really lose interest. The Midnight Club, which I know is kind of universally unpopular. And I think it actually has to be one of my top favorite series from Flanagan. I know that is super controversial, but it is what it is. And then I've also seen The Haunting of Hill House, which I know is so beloved and I really loved it too. I haven't seen it in many years, so it's kind of a little foggy about how I really feel about it. I saw Midnight Club the most recently, so it makes sense why that one's really, really high on my list. And other than that, I haven't gotten to Midnight Mass or Blind Manor when it comes to his series that he produced for Netflix. So I just really hope that I am really emotionally connected to these characters. Like I remember bawling after multiple episodes, not just one, multiple episodes of The Midnight Club, like waking up the next day in the morning with like a head that was paining me because my body was so sore. My head was so sore from crying the night previous. So I really hope that this series has something that keeps me engaged and captivated because my biggest concern here is that I'm gonna get bored, that it's gonna be a little dry, it's eight episodes, it wraps up by the end of it so I don't foresee there needing to be another season I just know that like when it comes to Poe's stuff I don't know if he's going to be adapting it directly from those stories which I have a little bit of experience with or if Flanagan was just kind of inspired by all the episodes and kind of made something totally new wholly original with this show I hope that there is that gothic atmosphere, you know, things really feel like they're lit by candlelight. I'm looking for atmosphere, I'm hoping for that. And I also hope that the characters in the family dynamic is very believable, because I think that was a huge selling point in my experience when I watched The Haunting of Hill House. So I think it is time for me to pop that on as if I have a physical copy of it, I don't, but it is time to finally give this series a shot and to see what on earth everybody is talking about. What a point to pause. <laughs> I'm at the halfway mark, literally at 30 minutes and 43 seconds. And I've been taking some notes as I've been going and I'm just gonna be sharing non-spoiler thoughts so far as I've made it in halfway into this first episode. First and foremost, I really love the opening scene at a funeral. Like I love the aesthetic of funerals, graveyards, cemeteries. So gothic, so very Poe. The lighting in that old Usher house 10 out of 10 it giving me exactly what I wanted so creepy and I love that it's kind of like starting from the end and then we kind of go backwards in the story and the backstory for the mother of the ushers is so wild not gonna lie like I was totally rooting for the mom <laughs> and what she was doing and I absolutely love how off the moral compasses for both Madeline and Roderick. Like they're definitely not working under the same premises of like ethics that I would operate under. And I love being able to like explore these really flawed 
deeply, deeply evil people in fiction worlds. Like it's so fun because like I'd never go to these lengths. I'd never think of doing these things. One of Roderick's adult children actually has a lane for bowling in their home. And this literally has no relevance on any major or even minor part of the story or the plot. But I want a bowling alley in my house. A girl can dream. Okay, let's get back into this. I'll check in with you once I've wrapped up this first episode. Oh my gosh, what? was that jump scare at the end that totally got me. Okay, so I wrapped up the whole first episode and I am intrigued, I'm interested. I think that they had so many mysteries laid out for us, so many questions that I have yet to answer. I'm really loving all of the actors in this show, like Kate Siegel, I loved her so much in The Haunting of Hill House, but she's so amazing as Camille. Like she super commits to that role. She has this like icy silver hair and she's like a powerhouse character. Like I'm already calling it. I think she's my favorite in the series so far. And it's interesting because Mike Flanagan uses a lot of repeat actors in his stories. And sometimes it could work with Mike Flanagan stuff for me, but then I feel like her two assistants, and I'll put them on the screen here, they just totally flopped for me, like standing in a room with Kate and having to play their characters, like it just, they took me out of it. When I watched them in um, Midnight Club, they were fine for me, but I do feel like because the cast was so young and they're still working on their own craft, when I was watching it in the Midnight Club, like it didn't, they didn't stand out to me as being lackluster as much as like they did in a room with somebody who's like such a master class of an actress as like Kate Siegel. But so far, I think those are only really the characters that I'm like meant on when it comes to the performances of the actors in this series. I enjoyed that jump scare at the end of episode one, but I'm not wholly convinced that this show will be like a five star series for me just yet based off of that first episode. Um, it didn't really leave on a cliffhanger. It didn't really leave me super eager to like press episode two. We do see Roderick at the end of episode one in a very life risky situation. So I might just like try episode two right now. I wasn't like really planning on that, but I do have the time. So just to kind of solidify for sure, cause I'm kind of on the fence, if I want to invest my time in a series, I'm gonna try episode two and hope that the pacing is a little bit more punchy for me. Okay, what the f was that? <laughs> I'm so glad I watched episode two because this whole week I am binging this series. I'm hooked. I am so hooked. That was so freaking wild and that is like <laughs> literally the worst way to go. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then there's like one character where I'm like, did they make it out or did they not in time for what went down? I guess I'll find out in episode three. Last night I finished the eighth and final episode of the fall of the house of Usher and I was bawling. That scene with Lenore and Verna got me. It was the only scene in the entire series that had me actually crying tears. I am giving this show a rating of four out of five stars. Although I got a little bored with the 1950s timeline of Madeline and Roderick, which I think got a little bit more interesting towards the end, and I found some parts of the narrative to be a bit repetitive and wish that we got a little bit more information, some more backstory about the Usher children, how they grew up, so we understood the motivations. I was still completely riveted by the ways that this story unfolded, like very, very sophisticated stuff. Every single thing felt super intentional from the clothing that characters wore that really accentuated their personality personalities and distinctiveness as children of the ushers or other kind of characters that are part of that universe to their homes and the placement of decor and other kind of furniture items like everything told a story things were given to you as the audience in a specific order in a specific way like the intention here just blows my mind it has a whole lot of rewatchability as well because of all that stuff i do know a common critique with flanagan's work is that there's a whole lot of exposition a whole lot of characters just talking to each other very little horror elements that are in there but i didn't mind i found that everything was really interesting like i really was fascinated by the characters by that world I am not used to that gratuitous amount of wealth and being a part of that world was quite fun because you just really didn't know what could happen because anything could. I was never at any time feeling like there needed to be more horror. I just felt like there were some moments when we had some like past timeline 
situations with Madeline and Roderick were a little bit boring with like a pacing that at times I was like, okay, like let's move things along a little bit. But then there'd be these really dramatic endings with these wild scenes. And I love that they ended on cliffhangers with most of these episodes that just had me ready to watch the next one. Like I went through this in about like three days time. And I think one thing I really wish that I've kind of already mentioned is that we did have a little bit more of a backstory about the individual children. I know that there's quite a bit of them, so that's kind of hard to fit within a mini series that's limited, but I think it did really need to happen. So then when we see how things unfolded for each of them, it was just that much more impactful for us as the audience. I wish it gave me that kind of emotional experience that watching The Midnight Club did for me. And I also felt that the messaging sometimes, especially towards the end of this series, felt just like a little heavy handed, but none of the Flanagan shows I've seen so far touch the like, you know, masterpiece that was and is the fall of the house busher. From the setting to the story to the acting, like, it was amazing. It was a great time. But what did you think of the show? Did you like it? Have you seen it yet? And how does it compare to the other Flanagan series you've got to so far? I cannot wait to chat with you all in the comments, especially to kind of get into a little bit more of those spoilers. I'll see you all in my next video, friends. Bye!